Welcome everyone to the Ready to Teach session, What's New in E-Learning? Um, and it's presented by the Italy E-Learning Advisors. So thank you all very much for coming. Um, we'll just get started. Acknowledgement of country. The University of Queensland acknowledges the traditional owners and their custodianship on the lands on which we meet. We will pay our respects to their ancestors and their descendants, continue cultural and spiritual connections to country. We recognise their valuable contributions to Australian and global society. Um, just a, a quick reminder of workshop. It, it quit, uh, um, so be present in the room. Um, I hope you get a lot out of this session. Please remember to mute your mic. There's a large group. We will have, if we have time, we'll have Q and A at the end where you can unmute your mic and ask questions. Also, please use the chat function to ask questions or we'll try to answer them uh, during the session. And as well, if we can't, we'll follow up in the follow-up email with answers for you. So today's agenda, we're going to start with um, Buddy Check presented by Helen. And Buddy Check is a group peer assessment tool, a new one at UQ. Uh, followed by Echo Polls. So Echo Polls are an excellent new active learning tool and that will be presented by Hong. Uh, Nathan then will show you our new recommendation for embedding videos in Blackboard, so using Echo 360. Uh, Ruth will give you a sneak peek at the new enhanced similarity report that is due sometime this year uh, from Turnitin. And Deliria will give you a demo of some new game modules uh, in the Chase, which is a H5P uh, tool. I'll give you an update to the Blackboard Ultra project, and we'll finish up with just a bit of information on our services. And I will now hand to Helen. Thank you, Elsa. Um, hi everyone, um, I'm Helen and I am really excited to start the What's New in eLearning session with BodyCheck. BodyCheck is a tool for um, peer evaluations where students, and this is a screenshot from BodyCheck, where students will rate themselves and other team members based on criteria such as contributing to the team's work and based on the levels of achievement. This can be used formatively to identify dysfunctional groups to allow you as course coordinators to put some appropriate strategies in place. And in fact, we do recommend if you run group projects to use body check, even if you don't have any marks associated with it, just formatively and also summatively to generate a mark based on individual student contributions to a group assignment to make the assessment equitable. Let me demonstrate how the tool works from the student perspective. So I'm a student in this course. I will navigate to the assessment folder and I will click on the uh, body check link. It will take me to the platform and I will hit the big blue button when it loads and I will start my evaluation. There is an introduction, which is totally and fully customizable. And um, you can either uh, do a divided points um, or you can do a Likert scale as I've demonstrated on the screenshot before. And you can see that um, you that this messages pop up and this is an opportunity for the students to actually offer some uh, qualitative feedback and explain why they give this or that rating. And so at the end, um, yeah, so, and this is the um, countdown actually telling the students so that they have so many points to divide. So, and the end, they will click submit and um, the evaluation will be submitted. There are a couple of optional um, features such as peer messages and they are enabled by the course coordinators. And if this uh, like motivation or explanation of scores go to only to the course coordinator, those peer messages will go to each group, each student in a group. And also another optional feature is open questions. It's basically like a, um, a text box for the students to offer their general thoughts about the group project, et cetera. 
those are um, features that are enabled by course coordinator. What will you, um, so another feature I would want to draw your attention to is student reports. So after um, they've completed evaluation, they will have, um, and the course coordinators can release this uh, report optionally, they'll have this radar chart with uh, the um, data on how they rated themselves, what rating they received from the group, and what's the team average, with the breakdown question by question. And if there were peer messages enabled, they would be there at the bottom. And we noticed that in many courses, um, in many courses add reflection as a part of group projects. And we found that this student reports are really um, an invaluable data of information for students who write in those reflections. What will year's course coordinators see in the system? So what data can you get out of the system? So you will see the averages. Um, it was based on the Likert five point scale. So the average is say those you can see on the screen. This averages translate into the peer factor. Um, and in the old system, only divided points could produce the factor. In body check, both Likert and divided points produce a uh, peer factor. And Likert actually is becoming more and more popular. Another uh, data that um, the system generates is this labels. There are eight in total, depending on the ratings that the student give each other. You can see some labels, for example, like tension or conflict. You definitely want to pay attention to those ones and offer some uh, support strategies. Um, also, um, body check talks to grade center. So for example, uh, the group will have like a 30 out of say 35, and everyone will get the same mark because that's the um, nature of the group project. And in the body check, you might want to publish grades. And what happens here is um, you will, it pulls all the columns from the grade center and you will select the one that you want um, the grades to apply to. So what's happening here? So these are all the 30 out of 30. Uh, of 35, for example, and this is the factor. So it multiplies the factor by the grade. So if someone did a great work in the team and their factor is above one, the overall grade would be above the team average, as opposed to someone who didn't pull all the weight and therefore their grade is lower than the team average. This makes the assessment equitable. We piloted body check last semester with just eight courses last year and received really very positive feedback. We ran extended pilot in semester two and now the tool is widely deployed and available for everyone who would want to use it. The vendor was supposed to do just two custom developments for us. They ended up doing more than 10 new features so which made the system very robust and very user friendly. And I would also want to take this opportunity to remind everyone that the old system group peer assessment tool or GPAD is now decommissioned. You cannot use it anymore. Please use BodyCheck. To support you in the use of BodyCheck, we are running a workshop this Friday from 10 to 12, and you can easily search it on the Italy website, or you can just memorize this link and get to the registration straight away. I'll post the link in the chat now. Um, that's it from me. Thank you very much for listening. Um, I'm happy to answer all the questions in the chat and over to you, Hong. Thank you, Helen. Thank you, Hong. And I would like to introduce about the new polling tool available at UQ uh, now, uh, which is called Echo Poll. And by way of introduction, I would like to invite all of you to join the poll today as the participant. And when you use your mobile phone to join the poll or you can use your desktop, uh, I'd like you to uh, fill in your first name because I would like to introduce the team functionality in the tool as well. So when you fill in your uh, name, please use your pseudonym or any name that you would like to use. You can use your real name as well, of course. Uh, 
Uh, so first, when you use the tool in your teaching, uh, the first line uh, is the join line for the student where the student can scan the QR code or they can use their uh, desktop and enter the code here. And the code, you can assign 10 unique code for yourself. On the other screen, I have my control bar, which I pull over here so that you can see it. Uh, currently, the status of my slide is closed. That means I haven't opened any question. And on student device, they will see the message waiting for presenter. And at that point, you can tell the student that um, uh, that means that you are in the poll, but you need to wait for me a little bit. So yeah, I can see the student joining in here, which is great. And also, I would like to start the team so you won't be randomly put into, maybe I choose five teams today, and the name of the team is the animal's name. So you will see on your screen, uh, I am in the giraffe's team, and each of you will be assigned to the bats or the beavers, so on and so forth. So now I will start with the first question, and the topic I choose today is UQ. And the first question here is a word cloud question. So you can see that the answer is pop up live on the screen because I've selected the options live show. Yep. And if you have identical answers, uh, the answers will be bigger in size. Yep. Well, we have uh, participants from different school and institutions at UQ, which is great. Yeah, and uh, on my control bar, I can see that there are 21 responses at the moment. And if you think that that is the number that you uh, want to have in the sessions, uh, you can click on the screen to stop the questions and move on to the ne next. Or you can give the student a bit more time so that they can fill in the answers. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so I will move on to the next question. And the next question is a multiple choice, and it asks you to answer the question, um, when was UQ founded? And if the student do not see the question on the device, you can ask them to refresh their device and then select the answers. Again, I can see that the responses number is increasing. And for this question, I do not want the participant to be influenced by others' answers. So I do not let the response to be shown live. I wanted to wait until I close the question. Yep, I have 25 responses so far. So I'm going to click and it will stop the answers. And then another click, it will show the correct answers here. Uh, so many people know that uh, in 1909, that was uh, the time when UQ was, the, the document was signed. But actually the year 1910 was the year um, that is used for more formal celebration. So uh, B is the correct answers. Let's move on to the next. So this one, I would like to demonstrate a numeric question where the, uh, the participant will uh, enter a number as their response. And the question is, ask about the number of Nobel laureates that have been associated with UQ. So again, I do not show the answers live because I want the students to think of the answers themselves. Yeah, I have, uh, okay, so the correct answers here is uh, six. So I can see that four of you have uh, the correct answers. And the ranking here is ranking the time, how fast that um, answer is entered into the system. So the next question uh, is about the coffee shops. I'm sure that all of us here are often... Uh, visit the coffee shop and it is a multiple uh, response where you can select a number of questions 
And as you can see that I have the clock tick ticking here. So uh, in case you want to have a clock, you can have it. And as I have 27 responses already, I can override the clock, click on the screen and it closed down. Yeah, and it seems that Patina Cafe and the Bell Top Cafe yeah, is very famous one among others. And in this question, uh, it is a hotspot uh, where you can, uh, the participant can enlarge the image on their um, mobile and select the correct answers. And this one, I like it to be live uh, because some questions, it doesn't, um, yeah. If you want to enhance the environment or it really depends on the nature of the question. Um, so yeah. Uh, most of you selected the koala and this is the correct answers. I know that you're just testing uh, the question. And uh, before I close the question, you can easily change your answers as well. And it will be reflected live on the screen. And yeah, the correct answers, as all of you have known, uh, koala is not living at UQ due to the habitat, but the other animal there, uh, the range of birds and wildlife is very rich in UQ lake area. And this one is yeah, another word cloud question if you need to describe UQ. And for this question, um, because of the nature of the question, I hide the, all the responses until I click to stop the questions because I do not want uh, participants to be influenced by each other's answers. So as you can see that I can apply different options for different questions that I have here. Yep. So as I uh, click to stop the question, then uh, all of the answers are shown on the screen. Yep. Stimulating, interesting, top uni, innovative, green, awesome. Yep. And I also have the final questions here. And for this one, you can uh, use this type uh, for a true false question uh, or the multiple choice can be reduced to a true false question. Okay, so thank you everyone for uh, joining the sample poll. And at this point, I will click on this button, the new on my control toolbar here, and then select the team ranking option. And it will add a slide to show which team is the top team. Yeah, so congratulations with the giraffe followed by the beavers. So I think that the giraffe might be quicker than uh, the beaver in entering the question, even though they have the same grade. And also, if I want to see who are the team leaders, I can click and add that slide for the team's leader. And the team's leader is um, selected um, randomly from the teams as well. So congratulations to Jasmine, which is me, because I know all of the answers that I created here. And then I can click on participants leaders. So participant leader is all of you in uh, the sessions today. So uh, Elsa, congratulations. Yeah, because yeah, as you know, I know the answers. So and Anita, Jess and uh, Luli, congratulations. And one more thing is that can you see that in the new button here, I can add a quick questions here. Uh, for example, I can add a multiple choice, um, any question that is on the list here on the fly. Uh, if I missed one question that I wanted to ask the student. And also if any student coming late and require the join slide, you can select uh, the join slide here, but make sure that the status of the current, the current slide should be closed before you can add a new slide or uh, a join slide.
Yeah, certainly my mouse is a bit uh, difficult to find here. Um, that I cannot click on the join slide, but uh, you can click on the join slide uh, under the new button and create a new question uh, or uh, the join slide. Okay, it is here actually. Yeah, and then the student can scan and join the same poll. So uh, if you are interested in the tool and uh, thinking of using the poll for your class, we have a workshop coming up and we also provide consultation and our guide page uh, is ready with the guides and the video instruction for you to use the tool. So I'm going to paste uh, all of the information that I have just mentioned in the chat and I will answer the question that you added in the chat. Uh, so now I will introduce uh, to the next presenter today. Um, Ruth will be presenting about the uh, new training tool. Yeah, thank you. I'm jump. I'm jumping in next. Sorry. Mm, I thought so. Hi, okay. Hi everyone. Yep. Um, Nathan <laughs> here. I'm going to uh, give you some information today about an updated. Um, process for embedding videos into your course site. Um, so due to some uh, improved functionality that has been rolled out by Echo360, um, e-learning has now changed its recommendation for embedding videos into your course site um, to Echo360. Um, so today I'll take you through a quick demonstration um, on how to embed a Echo360 video. Um, just to note in regards to this, um, that the embedding of the Echo 360 videos doesn't necessarily replace the current um, lecture recording link in your course site. Um, your um, recorded lectures and everything will still appear in your lecture recording um, area like normal. Um, so I'm just jumping into a course site here um, where I've jumped into a weekly folder for my learning resources. And I'm going to go through and embed a Echo 360 video. To do this, I'm going to go up to my build content button and into create an item. And I'm just going to give this a name. In the text box down the bottom here, I'm going to go uh, and click on the little plus uh, sign on the bottom row of the uh, toolbar there. If the tool, toolbar um, isn't expanded, there's a little three dots that will expand your toolbar out to show the full uh, list of tools. So I'm gonna click on the little plus to add some content. I'm going to go down to my Echo Video Deep Linking tool. And I'm going to select this. This will then take you through and log you into Echo 360. Just bear, uh, bear with me one moment while I log in. Um, this screen does not appear for um, regular staff. This is something to do with um, our team with extended access. Once you have made it in, uh, you'll come to this screen where you have a number of options. You, The first option is to choose from existing content. So if you've already pre-recorded um, your content, say via Zoom, um, and you've done a Zoom cloud recording, your content will automatically have transferred to Echo 360 and will be available via the Choose Existing Content. If you've already previously uploaded a lecture um, to your library, it will be in there. If you haven't already uploaded your content, you do have the option to upload your media um, via the bottom option there, and it will just take you to the standard upload window for um, Echo 360. Um, today, I'm just going to go through and uh, pick a video from my current library of videos. So I'm going to go into the Launch Media Picker. Uh, we'll then come into this uh, area where you can locate your videos. Um, there is a search bar at the top, which you can use to search for your videos. Um, on the right-hand side, it does have um, your most recent content. Uh, generally, I find it easiest to find my videos um, by changing the sort by um, to date created and then just changing it so that it orders my videos from the newest video to the oldest video because um, most of the time I'm embedding content that I've just uploaded. 
So once I've located my video, I just select it and it will get a tick on it. Down the bottom, I'll be able to hit on the next button. It'll then give you some embed options. For the most part, you don't need to edit any of those. You can just go through and click on the embed button down the bottom. This will then go through and embed the video into your uh, text box there. You can add any additional information underneath the video if you want, um, attach any documents as required, then click on the submit button. And this will then embed the Echo 360 video into your um, content there. Benefits of this include um, students will have access to closed captioning and transcripts, but as a um, coordinator, you'll also be able to access all the Echo 360 analytics as well. With your course content, as I said, um, this won't replace your lecture recordings link. Your lecture recordings link will still remain um, in the weekly learning resources area um, where all your um, scheduled recordings will appear um, as per normal. So I'm going to hand over now to Ruth and Ruth is going to take you through some of the Turnitin uh, upcoming changes. Thanks, Nathan. Okay, I'm here to take you through the Turnitin new similarity report, which you can't see as yet. Excuse me, I've just lost my mouse again. All right, here we go. Um, I'll just talk you through the timeline first. Um, by the end of March, sorry, they haven't given us a direct date yet, but by then it will be available for trialling in staging sites. And a staging site is one that um, we can still do testing in. It's not in the real production site. Then throughout the first semester, training will be offered to um, academic uh, associate deans for academia, uh, academic integrity officers, learning designers, and other academic staff. Um, and throughout this process, obviously, we'll keep getting feedback from you as well. Uh, sometime during the semester, it's proposed to be in mid-semester break. We will turn the new similarity report on in production sites as well. So in your course sites, you will have the option to use the new one. Um, but if you choose to, you can still use the current version. And then as we continue throughout the semester, keep your eye out for more communication to other staff um, and various forms of training being offered. So that's the plan. Let's have a look at it. I just want to start by reminding you the similarity report, remember, is not a plagiarism detector. You are the plagiarism detector and it simply matches text and flags instances where a student's writing is similar to or matches against one of the sources. So that hasn't changed with the new report. These colour codings for the proportion of matching text are the same as well. So you should be familiar with them. All right, here's a quick snapshot of the old and the new, and then I'll take you straight to a live demo version. So um, the main thing to note here is that there are new match groupings over on the right hand panel. So can you see these four match groupings here? I'll go through them. Um, Turnitin claims that this will make your similarity checking uh, much more intuitive and user friendly. And basically these categories are based on whether there is an issue with the quoting quotation marks, or whether there is an issue with the in-text citation or um, bibliographic entry, so any citation issues. So there are the four categories, but I'll go straight away to the live version. So here is a student's text, you know, when you open up the feedback studio from the assignment inbox. And here are the four categories. So the red ones with the document icon, there's a problem with either the citation method or the actual quote. The orange one here, there are missing quotation marks. So the system has picked up a match, but notice that there's no quotation marks for exact matches. 
the yellow ones, there's a problem with the citation. And then if we go down to the green ones, and you can see the color represented here in the student text as well, um, these have most likely been cited and quoted correctly, but of course, please check. Lastly, while we're in the live page, notice there are two tabs at the top. So there's those categories, the match groups, and on the right, the source list. Oh, it's just always the way, isn't it? Always my luck when we're in the middle of presenting. Okay, here we go. All right, so the source list is roughly the same. I mean, it just looks better, I think, but that's similar to the existing version where you can go in and investigate each source. Um, you can also um, toggle on and off these features while you're in the middle of your marking. If you've got some inflated number that you're a bit worried about, you might want to get rid of the bibliography while you're in the marking to double check. So that's what the new similarity report looks like. In line with this release and all the updates that we're receiving, I'll just talk you through that their database is ever expanding. So they're up to 47 billion um, internet pages, almost 2 billion student papers, loads of articles from the top you know, academic publications. And they've been really heavily promoting the fact that their non-English language content in the database is growing. And of course, that Turnitin now has over two decades in development of student papers in their database. So just remember, it's the same purpose. It is similarity uh, report. So it's text matching. It's not a plagiarism detection tool. And this is a, an image we always show in our workshops just to remind you that even though this one is 5%, it is plagiarized. The one on the right is 30%, but it has um, acceptable text matching. It's quoted and cited correctly. So it's the same for the new and the old similarity report. Uh, please rely on your understanding as an academic to check. So thank you. That was the new Turnitin Similarity Report. And now it's over to Illyria to show you three new game modes in the chase. Thank you, Ruth. Hi, everybody. Um, I am very excited to show you today um, some new game modes available for the chase, which we've been waiting for for a very long time. So I am very excited. So for those of you who know what the chase is, essentially it's like a live quiz game tool that is developed by H5P. All of you have access to it. You just need to request a license if you don't already have one. We've had the chase mode for a while now, and we've been anxiously waiting um, two new modes, which have uh, now appeared for us, which is page by page mode, which is really honestly Kahoot, um, just in H5P, and self-paced mode, which is an additional one we weren't expecting, um, which is very exciting. I'm looking forward to demoing and showing you both. So within the chase, there are a range of question types you have available to you. You've got markable question types where there's a correct or incorrect answer, and you've got non-markable question types. Depending on whether you're doing something that is maybe self-paced, some of the non-markable question types might apply, um, rather than something maybe Kahoot where you really probably want to mark in there because you're pushing students to kind of compete against each other on the leaderboard to get the correct answer. So I'll show you demos of both today, both types. The chase mode, for those who've just never used it before, because I don't want to glance over it entirely, pretty much the way it works is the instructor starts the quiz, all the students start at the same time and progress at their own pace. So the instructor can track live how the students are progressing in their scores, live in the session, and then once the timer runs out or the instructor ends the session, they can show the leaderboard and see who was the winner. Now, with this, um, everyone's been asking, I want to stop after individual questions for a range of different reasons. The biggest one being to see where everyone's at, um, but also to be able to have a chance to review the answer directly afterwards. And that is what we finally now have in page by page mode. So essentially, when you set up your uh, chase, you have a page and on each page, you can put one or more questions completely up to you how many you want. We do generally recommend one or maybe two so students aren't scrolling. And so the time between each question doesn't take very long. The instructor then controls when everyone moves to the next page. So if the students complete a question, then we stop, and then they can choose when to move on. Um, the instructions can then also show a summary and a leaderboard. Um, and without 
further ado, let's demo it. It's the easiest way to show you how this works. Who would have thought you'd be coming to play a game in a ready to teach week? So I uh, posted in the chat there a link. It's go.h5p.com. This is exactly what you do for your students as well. I'm going to now switch and I've got to refresh as well just because I had this up a while ago. And so pretty much the game code, which you'll be seeing on my screen, is what you need to be entering inside the web page you're entering to. So it's 6435736. And I will also pop that in the chat for you. So you've got a few modes. You've got chase, page by page, and self-paced. So we want to demo page by page today. I can see you as you join as well. So please keep joining. I'll also mention I did click on the full screen button because it does give a better experience. Eight of you, I'll definitely wait till a few more of you join. Um, and while I could do that, I can change the game mode um, and I can also determine whether I want it to be full screen when I click on start game. So you don't have to start in full, full screen mode. You can click on start and then we'll full screen out. Excellent, keep it coming. Give you guys a little bit longer to jump in. And then I'll do a quick demo of self-paced mode after to give you a glimpse of what it's like. In the chase mode as well, you would have been familiar with entering in a timer for the entire session. So that might have been five minutes, 10 minutes, however long you want it to run for. But with page by page mode, the time is set when you create the question. So one question may need 30 seconds, one may need a minute, one may need five seconds. So it really just depends. And that's why there's no additional setup work here, which is really nice. So you pretty much create it, run it, and you're ready to go. All right, we're getting a good number now, 20, 28. All right, you should still be able to join because the game code's in there anyway. Um, but we might get a move on just in the interest of time. All right, 30 people, not bad. Let's start the game. Okie dokie, so you can see the, the actual link and the game code is still there. So you can join the session after the fact. Um, and this is what the students will be answering there for you. So you got your timer now, because it's a nice short timer. Okay, time is up. Let's review the question. So you've got a leaderboard first and foremost. You can also um, see this leaderboard at the very end, but you'll see it after every question. So I can also click on the summary tab now. You'll see the question was, what year was UQ established? I can see how many people selected what, as well as the correct answer. So now that we've reviewed the question, you would probably spend more time on this, but due to the interest of time, I'm gonna click on the next button now in the top right-hand corner. You'll notice that these questions are short, sharp, they're multiple choice, true, false. We essentially just want a quick answer usually, but there are a range of question types. We've got a bit of a different one coming in a few. And counter is ending. Okay, look at our leaderboard. Slow turtle is certainly not slow. You can see you also got to choose an avatar and a name, a little bit of fun. Um, so the answer there is actually um, False. It was, I think it's like 666 meters or something like that. Then I'm going to jump into next. Um, this is a multiple answer question, which you can also do really similar to multiple choice. Which of the following schools are part of the Faculty of Health and Behavioral Sciences? Three, two, one. How are we going? Helen is still our leader. Slow Turtle is moving up. So is VF. Excellent. We've got a few people tied. VF and um, Yahoo, all number five leading. Um, and yes, so the, the top three are correct. The one that's not included is the School of Public Health, a common um, incorrect answer there. This is a different one as well that I wanted to trial with you today. So which word does not belong in the correct version of the UQ motto? It's mark the word. So click on the word that you think doesn't apply. So we've changed one on purpose. So you can see some of these question types because they're quick kind of work. Excellent. Oh, the leaderboard's changing. Ploopy. <laughs> Love it. Second place. Yes. So the second word does not belong. And our last one is a drag and drop. Now, this may not suit you for this particular page by page, but I thought it'd be a little bit of fun. So you just click and drag um, the answers into the correct section. I made it really quick for you today in the interest of time. Normally, you'd probably give them a little bit more time to that one. All right, I'll leave 
for today. Helen is the champion, followed by Bluthy and Pedro. Well done. So it's a little bit of fun. It's definitely very gamified. I really like it. And you can also go through all of the questions at the end if you want to. So that's a really, really nice feature of the way it works. Um, you can also show the summary on your participant screen, which you could do in the original version too. So now, once, now that I've clicked on the three dots and selected that, you can also review them on your screen as well. That's pretty much how the page by page version works. If you've ever played Kahoot before, you know it's extremely similar. Some things to know though in the settings. So you'll need to set a timer for each page. Don't forget to do that because the default's two minutes um, and you that's usually too long for most questions. You can enter more than one question per page if you like, but again, you probably will only want really one. Um, the timer length should reflect the type of question and the number of questions. So for example, the drag and drop could have easily been about a minute. Um, and the one that I didn't select today is you can optionally show the check button. So I don't like it because it slows it down. It also means that the students can see the answer straight away once they submit. If you kind of want to bring the students together, grab their attention back, it really helps to go through the correct answer there with them. It'll still give them a point, like if they got one out of one, then they'll know they got it right, but it brings their attention back to you. Um, the other mode, which I'll quickly demo for you, is self-paced mode. So this one is really designed to be completed asynchronously by students. Um, they complete it in their own time and they're given a temporary ranking. So they could complete it over the space of a week, however long period you choose, and then you can end the game, which will then show the leaderboard. You could then publish that leaderboard or ask students to get into the game again to access it. This one I'm going to demo in the interest of time. So again, loaded this a while ago. I'm actually going to show you in side-by-side -side preview, um, which is what we recommend you do once you create um, anything in the chase as well. Um, okay, so the example I have, I've already like done half in the interest of time, but these are some of the non-markable question types you haven't seen so far. So you can see the students navigate through the pages at their own pace. Um, some non-markable ones are like an image slider. You can put text, an image hotspot, um, videos, and even accordion. So there's a range of question types that you haven't seen because they're not really appropriate for the page by page mode, but you really can explore a lot more in self-paced. So you can see I'm seven out of 13 um, is my score there, which is awesome. And my temporary ranking um, is number one because no one else is in this game. So that's kind of how that one works. They just work through it in their own pace and go next, next, next and move on. Now, if this has intrigued you and you wanna get started with H5P and don't already have a license, please email helpityearning.uq.edu.au um, to request a free H5P license. Um, I'll get to your questions in the chat in a minute, but in the interest of time, I will now pass on to Elsa who'll be talking about Ultra. Thanks, Lyria. So I'm just going to give you a quick update on the Ultra project and Ultra is an update to our Blackboard. So if you're not aware, um, we've been working, we've been doing a proof of concept, so a trial of an update to Blackboard. So the trial has been done with six courses over summer with positive feedback from those course coordinators. And we're now going into a larger trial in semester one with 50 courses. So the purpose of this trial is basically to gather feedback from a wide range of courses across UQ to inform the decision and the adoption approach. After that, there'll be uh, the decision and, and funding um, for the next stage, which will be semester two, basically uh, preparation stage with the main deployment, semester one, 2025 to semester two, 2026, uh, if it goes ahead. Um, and I put the project page link into the chat so you can actually go there and get the full details. That's just a very, very quick overview for you. So I'll give you a quick demo of Ultra. So if I just open here, whoops, there's something I was playing with. So basically this is the new look and feel for Ultra, um, it's slightly different. You have a, a sta the standard menu at the top here and all the main content is in the main content page. So we have adjusted the template slightly and you have uh, weekly learning modules, um, which you can also have, you know, modules, you can have different naming, etc. 
it's very easy to add content. I won't, I don't, want, uh, don't have time for a full demo, but for example, if I want to add content to week one, I can just hover on a line and choose where I want to add it. So anywhere in the page and I can click on create. It gives me a list of all the inbuilt tools in Ultra and I can choose. So maybe I just want a new document and I can add that in, add content. Uh, upload for my computer, etc., which I won't do. And as well as all the standard inbuilt tools that have a new look and feel and improved uh, uh, functionality and improved workflows, you can still access all our uh, third-party tools that we plug into Blackboard. So we can go to the content market and that's where you find the list of all our additional tools. Um, so as you can see, that's where Echo, the Echo Deep Linking tool is in H5P and Grade Scope, Turnitin, etc. So that's from the staff point of view. And how does it look from the student? So I'll just keep bring over here. This is me as in a student in the same course as a student. Um, so it has a couple of really nice features for students. Um, basically, they can track their progress. So, for example, you can see um, me as a student. I have been into week one, and I've done. I've looked at four of the pos four out of four of the items in that week, but I haven't had a look at anything in week two yet. If I go into week one, we can just have a quick look. So, I might go to the overview page, and I can basically, so there's sort of an overview. I can navigate page to page, so it has that sort of book-like navigation. And this is an icebreaker. So as you can see, I've already been in here and done that activity. So that's a discussion board that's in line. Um, there may be an introduction. And I'm just going to show you uh, the PDFs. The student has the option of viewing them in line so they can view them in line or they can download them. Um, and again, of course, our videos will be there. Not sure why it's not showing up, doesn't like the internet at the moment. Uh, and I can navigate back and forth so I can go back there as well. So that's some navigation. As a student, I can also um, check off. So if I've completed this, I have this little tool that I can, so the little half circle show that I've um, accessed the item and I can actually click off uh, when I've completed them and keep track. This, uh, staff members have access to this information as well. And I'll quickly show you the quiz tool. I'm just going to go into the new quiz tool as a student. Uh, a, a bit, same question types, but just a better look and feel. And I've got my timer and some new functionality, which you'll see in a minute. So I've got my academic integrity pledge. I can do some questions here. Uh, I won't worry about getting the right answers. Um, and this is really something that you can really see. I don't know what's happened to my internet. It worked, of course, when I wasn't doing your demo. But we've got a YouTube video here. So this is the stimulus material, um, <coughs> a bit of stimulus information. And then I have two questions related to this stimulus material. So that's the new feature, basically. And I'll submit. And it's telling me that I haven't done all the questions. So that's a very, very quick look at Ultra from a staff and student point of view. So just some things to note. Um, so the core updates are to our core tools, assignments, adding content, tests, and grade center. There is some new functionality to explore. Um, one interesting one is conversations. You can turn on a little discussion around a particular item. So it could be a reading, for example, and students can comment on it yeah, it, uh, it's in line with the reading. Um, some other changes are some of the less used tools have been discontinued, so we'll be helping staff move off those tools. And there's been changes to the content level, so you can have three content levels, two folders and content, um, but we have strategies to help you uh, work with that. 
and it actually really improves the accessibility and the navigation in the courses we found from the proof of concept courses that I've trialled over the summer. Um, so this is just the same information. Basically, our core tools are changing, but all our other tools that you're used to, H5P, Gradescope, Course Insights, etc., you may access them slightly differently, but they work the same. So it's not a huge change. And if you're really interested in uh, finding out a bit more about Ultra, uh, go to the project page and also order yourself a sandbox course. So in the sandbox course, we have a list of um, suggested activities um, and you get to use Ultra. It's on staging, which is our test server, not our real Blackboard. And um, there's also a survey in there so you can give feedback or ask questions and we'll put the answers up on the website. Um, just please note, if you order your sandbox course now, our support staff are very focused on the start of semester. So there, there may be a delay because they're prioritising um, course copies for semester one. But please order it. You'll get it in a, a week or two or a few days. Depends what the queue is like at the moment. Um, just a quick reminder of e-learning services. Please, if you've got any questions about the Ultra Project, put them in the chat. I'll get to them um, at the end or send the answers in the follow-up email. Um, so, so just a reminder about e-learning services that are available. Um, so we have a range. We look at our team supports all the centrally supported e-learning tools. Um, and some of the services we have include staff guides. Um, so a full comprehensive staff guide. That includes recommendations about um, using the tool in the UQ setting based on our policies and our context. There's also guides for students, which we recommend that you um, add to your website to support students using tools. Uh, we have workshops. So we have self-paced workshops that you can access online and do at your own pace. We have central workshops, mainly via Zoom. Uh, and we also have workshops custom. So you can uh, request a workshop for maybe the tutors in your course or for your school on a specific topic. Um, the other services we have are one-on-one -on -one consultations and you can book into those consultations in a booking page. Um, you just choose a time slot that suits you. Um, and that, that we help a lot of staff basically implement e-learning tools for common teaching and learning problems and can give you advice on what, which tool or which use case. Um, also, don't forget e -learning, uh, our e-learning help desk. Uh, for technical support, please uh, email help at elearning.uq.edu.au. And just a reminder, if the urgent uh, matter is urgent, so maybe you've got a problem with an assessment item, you can use urgent in the subject line uh, and it will be responded to within an hour, uh, usually, frankly, within 10 minutes. Um, that's all for the moment. I think we've got seven minutes. If anyone has any burning questions they'd like to ask or maybe unmute, I will also we'll also go through the chat, make sure we've answered everything as well. Any questions there? Maybe I might just see if there's any in the chat. All right. I don't think we've got any. All right. Thank you, everyone, for coming to our What's uh, New Elsa, and we have two questions in the chat. All um, right. So, yeah, yeah. One question is the main differences between using Ecopol and the Chase. Um, so, I'm answering about the Ecopol and Elivia my app. Uh, the chase to the answers. Mm -hmm. uh, so EchoPoll is the polling tool. So you can uh, add the question into your PowerPoint. So the one that I'm demoing today was a PowerPoint presentation where I add my question onto the slide and I can run it as the 
polling tool in the class. And also you can uh, add a bit of the team functionality or the leaderboard uh, in that polling as well. Uh, but for the chase, um, Elida, can you help me with explaining about the chase? Yeah, yes. of course. So um, as Hong said, uh, Echo Poll kind of runs within a PowerPoint. Um, and it, although it can run different ways with uh, H5P the chase, you go to the H5P website, you set it up that way, and it's meant to be run just through the web page itself live. There's no way to like embed it in the same way in a PowerPoint as you do with Echo Poll. Um, they're probably really used for different things. Uh, really, the chase is very much um, about gamification, could be about a knowledge check. Um, so it really just depends how you want to use it really in your context. They're both sort of polling tools in a way, but the chase, you also have like detailed reports on what students selected and things like that. Um, but you don't have Teams functionality, for example, which Echo does. So I guess just really weighing up what you want to use it for. Probably I normally question. explain um, Echo polls like a Mentimeter Mm -hmm. equivalent and uh, the chase is like a cahoots equivalent yes yeah. because you probably wouldn't use those two for the same thing mm. and what was the second question i've missed uh, do we need uh, to use echo 360 or we can rely on automatic recording you might have that one explained a bit more potentially Automatic Zoom recordings or automatic? Oh, so the, the embedding of the Echo video is we still got you still got the automatic recordings of your lectures in the lecture theatres that go through and you students get uh, access them from the lecture recording link. Um, the embedding of videos is maybe you've done your own recording, maybe through Zoom, maybe you've done a, a recording for to cover maybe a, a a lecture that's being missed because of a public holiday and or it's on a special topic and you want to actually embed it in your course. So um, we still have our lecture recording system working as normal. Does that answer that question? Um, we've got three minutes to go, so we're going to have to wrap up. Uh, thank you all very much for coming and um, we'll send you um, a follow-up email with a copy of the slides and we'll make sure we've answered all your questions. So thank you, thank you everyone. I think you're going to have to end the recording, Ruth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, sure, Luli. Thanks, Helen, for answering the question. <laughs>